Mr. Tough Guy and this and that. Let me tell you something. This dude talks about killing my daughter on the record. He does not want to take it there. He does not want to take it there. If he really wanted to take it there and take it on a street level, like he's saying and screaming and jumping up and down in his records, he would he would not have went back in the studio. Because a mic can't fight you back, dog. I must be possessed like an evil spell. Tommy V I L. Bro, that was hard. <laughs> Yo, he's spazzing. Yeah, bro. What? He's nice. <laughs> nice. How have I not heard this, bro? He got, bro? he got so much shit like this. What up, what up, what up, Night Nation? This your boy, Stevie Knight. Bot to get on one of these things, you feel me? What's good with the watch? Night watch, man. Um, So, Fitty dropped the, uh, well, he ain't dropped. But he did an interview with, what's cuz his name? Did an interview with Brian J. Roberts. A few months ago, man. I saw a few snippets of it on the reel. Somebody had dropped and it brought me to this interview, bro. And um, if y'all ain't peeped it, if y'all don't know about it, I will definitely drop the link for this shit below, man. Uh, 50 is always interesting just to hear his ass talk. And drop gems. That okay is a gem dropper. You understand me? You know what I'm saying? Like I mean, he been through everything, bro. Because it's intelligent as fuck, and he knows how to talk. He knows how to express shit in layman's terms, and he just makes shit hit, bro. Like he don't get enough acknowledgement as far as like as I mean, but he don't. I mean, he don't put himself out there as much as he, well. That's cap. That's cap. He be doing a Twitter thing, man, but he could easily be crushing the game if he was out here. Fuck, he already crushing the game too. But there is a niche that he hasn't touched where he could definitely capitalize off of with a mic in front of his face and just letting him talk on topics, bro, because he is entertaining, engaging, and dope as fuck at that, right? Definitely for the, like, the whole Manosphere space, bro, he would do wonders for it, bro. So if you are interested, man, it's called 50 Cent from bulletproofs to tailor suits new interview right and then i've i've watched it up until the point that i saw that reel and the reel got my attention and i wanted to express my thoughts on it but i wanted to see if there was longer format from the reel that i saw but um yeah let's tap on in man but before we do tap in man make sure y'all tap into shop stevenite.com man anytime you see your boy rocking some drip that you rocking with man pull up to the site find something like i got you um and please consider subscribing if you ain't subscribed and if you believe you are subscribed make sure you still are subscribed because you know youtube be on that bullshit and uh yeah without further ado let's get it curtis jackson we talking politics and politics like m i'm gonna get m out of the house like for my birthday uh dre jimmy paul everybody came see me in london and stuff like that and uh, it's great and I just, I get on the phone with him. And then I really feel good. You know what I'm saying? Because he's the last piece to, to that puzzle. But um, we just got to, like, while we're there, we having a conversation. Yo, we got to get him out. I'm like, get him out. So why y'all didn't bring him? Like, you know what I mean? Like, they could have got him. Like, I'm now I'm, I've become one of those people that they'll go, if you would have called, it may have happened. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and it's only because of consistency. You know, like him, what he did for me, I get him out. I'm like, get him out. So why y'all didn't bring him? Like, you know what I mean? Like, they could have got him. Like, I'm now I'm, I've become one of those people that they'll go, if you would have called, it may have happened. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and, and it's only because of consistency. You know, like him, what he did for me, you can't, you can't repay that. You know what I'm saying? Like, people, they don't understand it. Like, I always knew, it was, like, my head didn't get big with momentum because of me and M's relationship. When I'm doing 13 main records, I'm the biggest thing in hip-hop culture for any artist that you could directly compare to me, but he's doing 23 main records on the Marshall Mathers LP. So I know that there's room for growth, and I traveled, and I traveled. I said, I want... The Marshall Mathers LP plaque, it was in the, our business manager office. I only trust those people with my money because they had M's money. Mm. Mm. And we look and had the Marshall Mathers. Hold on, bro. Hold on, dog. We got we to we pause it there. We got to take a brief intermission, bro. 
<laughs> but the fact cuz said that the reason why 50 was humble like that's it's not a word i would ever use to describe 50 but but if he using that word to describe himself through his career you imagine how much insane this fool would have been in the limelight if m wasn't there and and would 50 be as successful as he is without m i would put dre in there but it seems that nah but m had way more impact on 50 than dre did m's providing the blueprint getting all the records he's pretty much representing what 50 wants to be i'm sure 50 wants to hit that mark and go beyond it right so i'm imagining the motivation he had the ambition the aspiration to achieve these eminem numbers achieve these eminem heights and just following this blueprint to go crazy i don't think so i don't think 50 would have been as successful as he would have without m and then i mean m provides that reach too you know what i mean like <laughs> <laughs> well nobody selling like M and one didn't nobody have the reach that M did. You put 50 in them. Granted, 50 would have been successful as fuck regardless of who the hell he would have signed with. Hell, he could have stayed independent and still would have gone crazy. But I think he maximized 50 maximized himself as an artist, being signed to Shady Aftermath and being, you know, the understudy of, of Eminem. So yeah, I don't think 50 could have been more successful without M there. So that's saying a lot. That's saying a lot. Mm. And we look and had the Marshall Mathers plaque and had all of these. Oh, and then uh, and he said, he said, he said, he said, hey, only reason why I trusted these fools with my money is because M trusted these fools with his money, dog. <laughs> that's hard, bro. That's hard, dog. There's room for growth. And I traveled. And I traveled. I said, I want. Like the Marshall Mathers LP plaque, it was in the, our business manager's office. I only trust those people with my money because they had M's money. Mm. And we look and had the Marshall Mathers plaque and had all of these flags when I see, I want that. And that's why I tore it. And then when you see me say the final lap and it says 90 dates for the tour, it's because I've done the footwork because I wanted the flags that was on this plaque mm. then. Mm. Mm. You see what I'm saying? Like the, the M didn't, he didn't tour as much because he said he didn't want to go on tour and come back and Haley be grown. And it's it's real. Like you can get into to the regimen, you just doing, you're doing it, and you look and you go, what? And even though it's a start and stop type of thing, start and stop, then you look and you turn around and your baby is grown, bro. Mm. Like, like you gotta, Shh, what the fuck mm. did I do? Like, you know, and you missed a lot of stuff. A lot and of that moments. That makes me think how much bigger M could have been if he did the whole tour and shit. <laughs> he didn't need to, of course. He don't need to be any fucking bigger than he is, but imagine how much more famous that motherfucker could have been if he was out here touring all these years, bro. But that's grown man shit. I don't need to. I'm gonna stay home. I already did the leg work. I already fucking got the money out here. All right. I'm already, I'm already, I'm, I am already him. Spend my time with my baby, dog. That's hard, bro. That's hard, dog. <laughs> Me and my girl had these types of talks all the goddamn time, bro. Like, at the end of the day, nothing else matters besides your fucking family. No matter who the fuck you are. No matter who the fuck you are. Eminem. <laughs> Donald Trump. <laughs> fucking trying to name, like, the polarizing people. Cardi B. That's real shit, dog. Don't nothing matter. There's nothing more important than fucking family, bro. And uh, family can either, you know, put that juice in your ass to go out there and achieve or sit your ass home and chill with your family because you have achieved, bro. Went some things and um, he was conscious of that. Like he wanted to do that. He got a lot of money. Yeah, you know, sold over 120 million records, bro. You don't do shit after you sell 120 million records. <laughs> Take your ass somewhere and go sit down. If you sit in the studio to create new material, critique things and say, I could have did this better, or I could make this, and, uh, and and really work on your craft, that, you're going to do that forever. Because right? yeah. the comfort, I think when you did 8 Mile, they made him uncomfortable. 
It mm-hmm. is like, like if you're not prepared, like I'm over over prepared. I don't want to be there and be uncomfortable because I don't well, have nah, that you gotta be un- information. You gotta, or- you gotta be uncomfortable, bro. Comfortability causes causes complacency, bro. Uncomfortability causes you to, requires you to grow, and that's why Eight Mile was such a fucking classic, bro. When you put yourself in new situations that you're not in control of, that causes you to get outside your comfort zone, that's when you, that's when you become a better you. You know, it's either you succumb to the pressure or you show up and show out. I don't know my lines. Like that, mm-hmm. me and De Niro, Robert De Niro, he called me, I had to go sit with him. I went, met him, he, had a, he was staying in New York City, by Central Park. I um, went to go see him because he wanted to make sure that it was a movie project we were supposed to, looking to do together. Uh, and um, when they told him that, that I, I would do it, he was like, it would meet with me to make sure that I actually was interested in- That you were serious. The crap and the project. Because you didn't want to end up in one of these type of DMX situations with the motherfucker that locked himself in the trailer and it's got other stuff going on because mm. you don't know the lines. You don't know what you're supposed mm-hmm. to be doing today. Like, you know what I'm saying? And for that was one of the experiences that it was like, after he, like we, we met, we talked then and it, it created a relationship that was a little more Let's say it was it was better, right? Because we interacted on that at that point. It was just me and him, and then um, the, the, we didn't end up making the film. But the next thing that came up was Righteous Kill. So it was right. him, him and Al Pacino in the same film, and they actually were performing the uh, in the scenes together because they did Heat. It was in right. Heat, but it was one scene. This one, they, you know, worked on a few scenes together and stuff like that. So it was great to have both of them in there to, to watch. And then the, uh, it also was like, why does he keep talking to him? Like, why does he keep talking to that kid? Like, Right. And then it makes the, the, Pacino talk to me more. <laughs> because he already, we already made acquaintance on things, you know, prior to that. Dope ass interview, man. Um, I'm going to continue. <laughs> I'm gonna finish watching this motherfucker. Not on camera with y'all, bro, but that was just a I had to highlight that part, man. Now come on, bro. Come on, man. That's fire, bro. But yo, you know, 50 could talk. And um, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Anyway, uh, we out here, man. Grind the girl, growing the grind. Oh the goddamn time. Night nation that watch, love y'all more, man.